bought his new car three days before that. And he was just riding around in his car. He said, Mom, go for a ride. And they killed him. They killed him. Welcome back, guys. I trust you've been staying safe. Today's true crime story is taking us to the United States of America, where we are going to cover the case of Dexter Reed and look at how a regular traffic stop for him not wearing a seatbelt quickly escalated to the point where police were able to discharge 96 rounds in 41 seconds at Reed, which then turned fatal for him. Now, this case has garnered a lot of public attention and it seems there are two perspectives to it. The city and even people out there outside the city seem to be split on it where one part is justifying that the police did the right thing and then there's the other side who are also insisting that the police didn't do the right thing and their actions were excessive. I'm here to try and analyze the footages as I can and also analyze the two perspectives with the hope that maybe we can find a silver lining where justice is put out where it's supposed to be. But bear in mind that all this is going to be based on my own opinion and analysis and my heart goes out to the family of Dexter Reed, irrespective of who is at fault here someone has passed and as is right my channel commiserates with them now the whole thing started on the 21st of march 2024 where dexter reed was pulled over for not wearing a seat belt on the regular this would have been a traffic stop it's, it's one of the regular traffic stop, uh, how do I put it, infractions, if someone would say. So, you would expect that this shouldn't be something that should escalate that fast. And this was just somewhere around the 3800 block of West Ferdinand Street. And at this point in time, just as it happens to many people who are pulled over for such traffic violations, you are expecting maybe they are given a ticket or something. But then, out of the blue, the police, who were also in an unmarked car, got out of their vehicle and if you look at how they had parked, it seemed like they had parked to block Dexter Reed, although it's not obvious whether that was the intent or that's how they ended up parking. But then, they ended up parking that way. They came out of the vehicle and shouted instructions to Dexter Reed. Now, when they shouted the instruction, you would see that these police officers are in plain clothes. And they shouted to Dexter Reed that he should roll down his tinted driver's side window. He did. And they told him to roll down the other side. Now, you can hear Dexter Reed also saying that he is not doing anything. And then, he then starts rolling the glass up. Now, you can hear an officer ordering Reed not to roll the window up. And this officer tries to pull on the driver's door handle. But then it turns out the vehicle is locked. And then the officer shouts do not roll the window up unlock the doors now from this point you can see at least two officers taking out their service weapons and then aiming at reed while still giving him orders so at this point this is where the first perspective comes in those who are thinking that the police were excessive in their approach are saying that this is something that has escalated too fast. How do you go from stopping someone for not wearing a seatbelt allegedly to quickly going to the point where you're already going for your service weapon when there isn't any clear imminent threat? But then, what happens next is also something else because 
As they shout the instructions to read not to roll the glass up, Reed seems not to mind them, and then he ends up rolling the glass up. And several moments after that, you'd hear that shots were heard, and officers start turning away from Reed's vehicle and running away. Now, according to what is coming out, it's alleged that it was actually Dexter Reed who opened fire on the police officers. So, that is where the other side of this conversation also comes in. Where they are saying that the police did everything right. They didn't apply any excessive force. They were just being cautious because the, the, the windows of Dexter Reed's 4x4 vehicle are tinted. So, they couldn't see through and they are in no position to determine whether their lives are in danger or not. So, better safe than sorry, they had to draw their service weapons. And it turns out they were right because Dexter Reed allegedly discharged about 11 shots at the police. And in the process, he injured one police officer in his arm. At this point, this then escalated to the point where the police would end up unleashing a total of 96 shots on Dexter Reed in less than 41 seconds and the rest is history so when this came up several opinions were out there like i said one side is saying that the police were too excessive the other side is saying that the police did nothing wrong and that the only victim in this case is the police officer who was injured by dexter reed but then some questions are coming up which some deem as relevant. Now, the first question is, evidence gathered by the oversight investigators are calling into question the veracity of the officer's claims that they stopped Reed for a seatbelt violation. Yeah. Okay. Because this is because they are uncertain how officers would have seen Reed was not wearing a seatbelt given their positions and the fact that, like I said, the windows of Dexter Reed's SUV had tinted windows. Very valid question. Because, like I mentioned earlier, his vehicle had tinted windows, so they couldn't see through to determine whether they are in danger or not. That's how come probably they drew their service weapons. And if that's the case, how then do you get to the point where you are able to see he's not wearing a seatbelt? Unless, of course, there is another reason, probably, which they are not telling us, maybe. Now, it's also coming up that these same officers who are involved in this incident were already being investigated by the oversight agency for their role in a similar traffic stop, which was also based on a seatbelt violation. And this had happened just a few weeks prior to the incident of Dexter Reed coming up. So, these are really valid questions. And I'm thinking that further investigations need to go into this. But then, the officials are also saying certain things. Because, mind you, this is a city. And there are various officials who are the helm of affairs of this city. Now, the mayor, Brandon Johnson, said that he is pledging transparency and accountability from his administration during the investigation into this incident. And I think rightly so, but I'm hoping that it's not going to be more like a Black Lives Matter movement. I'm thinking the investigation should be objective and unbiased. It shouldn't start with a mindset of what happened already sort of influencing the direction of the investigation because then that would lead to a bias because it can also happen that the police actually did nothing wrong but that is for the investigation to determine because as it stands now it looks like the two sides of the argument have points to an extent to support their stance because as they say if you 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 draw a weapon and fire on an officer or a police officer it can't be condoned but then again 
how the officers also respond should also be at the highest of standards as agents of the law. So the whole thing is looking like something that is getting ready to drag. And it has already started because when the police camp footages were released, Reed's family and a dozen of activists gathered outside the police district building to demand justice and accountability. So the protests have started. And during this time, you would see that people are rallying and chanting in the intersection and they are basically trying to force the hand of the police to speed things out and ensure that justice is served. Now, Reed's family, on the other hand, they are saying that they want Dexter Reed to be remembered as a brave, outspoken, sweet and genuine young man. And also, they knew him as a gifted young man who was a standout athlete. He had aspirations to start his own clothing company and be a sports broadcaster. Now, he's he's also alleged to have loved to play basketball and played at Western House College Preparatory High School, where he led his team to a regional championship in 2016. He was a very sophisticated, smart, ambitious guy, and he liked to play basketball and go to the gym and keep up with his health and spend time with his family. Now, all these are coming mostly from his sister, who has also set up a GoFundMe for him and things pertaining to this incident. But you see, that is the family saying this, and I don't begrudge or fault or debate them. But then there's the other side of Dexter Reed that I think to be fair, we must also talk about. That is the fact that some are also saying that Dexter Reed is actually a felon and that his family are saying that he was just driving and then the police just ambushed him and did what they did. But then, that is not the case. And that for starters, the photos of him being used by the media, they show that he was in a high school graduation, but that photo actually dates back about eight years. And they say this as a preamble to the fact that they are saying that since that time, Dexter Reed has been arrested multiple times. So if the family really wanted to be consistent with his current state, they should have maybe used mark shots. Now, they are saying that why is the family trying to portray Dexter Reed as an innocent teenager when he was actually not an innocent teenager? Because I think at the time of this incident, he was actually somewhere in his 20s. Now, I get where they are coming from, although... I think it's a bit harsh but you know in as much as it is sad that he has passed one of the questions that they are saying or asking about Dexter Reed is he was a repeat criminal offender and they don't understand why his mom is now coming out quickly in front of the camera when this happened to him to grant interviews and lead protests and even seemingly collapse doing so when her son was going through all these things where was she i think that is a good question but it might also not be fair because we were not following the affairs of this family at the time so we are not in a position to know whether she really didn't do much or she did her best but dexter was in his own mind so it is a bit dicey but then just to have an idea of the rap sheet of Dexter Reed, according to Chicago police records, Dexter Reed was actually arrested on July 13, 2023, two blocks from the United Center and charged with felony aggravated unlawful use of a weapon. Take note of this. And then he was also arrested for shooting just two blocks from another site. That was another time. And then on the 20th of April, 2023, Dexter Reed was again arrested and charged with retail theft from the Zara clothing store. So you can see this guy had a rap sheet and it ties back to the people who are trying to support the stance of the police saying that Dexter Reed didn't panic. He knew what he was doing because he had this rap sheet 
and he felt that if he's taken in knowing that he had a weapon which probably was not licensed or he didn't have a, a, a permit for he be spent some time in prison so he felt he has to fight it out but it makes sense to an extent but the question is how do we know that was the case exactly we don't so we just have to wait for the investigations to conclude but what do you think about this case what do you think are the likely reasons why the starid did what he did do you think that those who are saying the only victim in this case is the officer who was hit in his wrist by dexter reed or you think that dexter reed is the actual victim given that he has been unalived let me know what you think about all this in the comment section and the investigations are still ongoing by cooper and i'm waiting to see what the final verdict will be but hey like i always say when you find yourself out there keep an eye out and stay safe i'll catch you on the next one